Hey guys, we're back in the kitchen and today I'm canning leftover ham. And I've also had a request for well, how I do my beans. So I'm gonna do some ham and beans. I'm gonna do them all in pint jars because Cinnamon Girl will let you can uh, two layers of pint jars and I'm just dying to try that. So I've got in the bottom rack, I've already got it full. I've got um, some, what have I got in there? Oh, ham and broth. And I've also got some, um, I better look. Oh, some, I'm gonna dry can ham, which I've never done. So I've got that in there. I believe I've got nine pints in the bottom because this will hold nine pints in the bottom and nine in the top. So let me get my stuff over here so I can show you how I do dry beans. I know some of you've seen that. How I do my dry beans. I'm gonna show you how I am gonna dry can ham. Now I've never dry canned ham before. I've dry canned other meats, but typically it's raw. Um, like uh, raw beef, chicken, pork, whatever. Um, it's before I've cooked it. Now this ham I didn't cook per se, but as most of you know, the hams that you buy in the store, they're already cooked. They've been cured, smoked, and cooked. And basically all you're doing is warming them up. And so I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I think it'll be okay, but when I dry can, you add no liquid, no water, no broth. You let the meat create its own juices. If it doesn't work, We'll be eating a lot of ham because if it doesn't work you need to use it right away okay i'll start with um, the can ham i cut up the ham and this is before i went ahead and we'll call it baked it yesterday for christmas dinner and i've just got it cut up chunked up in there since it's a meat product i'm going to use vinegar to wipe the rim of the jar always wipe wipe the rim and I'll be using my new Tatler lids. Now these, I'm gonna go into more depth of canning supplies, but uh, these need to sit in really hot water. You put this on, and there's two ways now. I learned a new way of doing it the other day, and um, I used to get it finger tight and back off a quarter but they say just set that on there and tighten it until the jar begins to move because basically you want it you want it pretty loose so it can vent so of course now i'm going to have trouble getting the lid the, the threads on straight here we go so it's loose and you pick it up and just set it in the canner like that my beans, I know most of you see me do beans, but I've had a request. I, this is not the approved way of doing beans, dry beans. It's what I do. You're gonna see some things. I'll try to remember any time that I do something the wrong way. But this is a pint and I'm doing black beans basically because they're upstairs and I didn't want to go to the basement and get more pencil beans. But in a pint jar, I. After I've washed my beans, I put in a half a cup of the dry beans. And then you put in a half a teaspoon for pints, one teaspoon uh, for quarts. But you use canning salt, canning and pickling salt. I can't even read. Yeah, this is the half teaspoon. So a half a teaspoon of the salt. And then what I do is I fill it up to an inch, to an inch and a half. When you're using Tatler lids, you need just a little bit more headspace. Inch to an inch and a half from the top. And I just use tap water. We have well water, so there's no chlorine in it. Um, and we have a whole house filter, so I don't have to worry about all the minerals. Okay. 
You always debubble. I found my plastic. Make sure you get all the air bubbles out. Wipe the rim of the jar. And put a lid on. And there you go. Another experiment I'm going to try today is I have a lot of um, broth left over. Ham broth. And uh, you know me, I don't want to waste anything. So I think I'm going to try canning some beans in ham broth, which of course you wouldn't add salt to. I think that'll give them a good flavor. So I'm going to get the canner loaded and I'll be back. All right, guys. Cinnamon Girl is full. I've got 18 pints in here. Now, I've got the lid. Here's the arrow. The notch is here. So, put the lid on. I've already done the oil, the olive oil on the beveled edge. Remember, go opposite and tighten it down go all the way around opposite and I do have the heat on high and then after you get them all then you go back and give them one more tighten it down good so you get a good seal remember it's metal on metal okay now we're gonna go until it here we go. Vince, a steady stream of steam. First try. And it will do that for 10 minutes, and then I'll put the weight on it. Okay, check in later. Okay, guys. We're steaming away. I've got the timer set for 10 minutes. All right, the timer has gone off. And I'm going to put this weight, see the 10 pounds? For my altitude, it's 10 pounds. So I'm going to put the weight on there, and we're going to wait for it to start jiggling. Okay, guys, it's jiggling now. So what I'm going to do, the gauge says 10 pounds pressure. But these gauges are reference only. You go by the weight, and you can go this back and forth. I used to think I had to keep it right on the um, 10 pounds and I was forever fidgeting with the heat and I later learned that it's the weight so looks like it needs to it's kind of so, slowed down a little bit so I'm going to let it continue there it goes what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the heat down where it just jiggles three to four times a minute and I'll also use that as reference which this thing is you know the gauges I learned kind of made me a little bit more nervous than I had to be but the more you can you'll get to know your canner and your stove and you'll know about uh, what setting that the flame or what electric I, I've never camped on electric I don't know but what level the, the flame needs to be at to keep it at that steady pressure. Now, if the pressure drops down too low, you have to start your timing all over again. So, since I'm canning pints, and I have a variety of product in there, I have the beans and the broth and uh, ham and ham and broth, I have a variety in there. You always use the longest. So, ham, meat, is uh, 90 minutes for quarts, 75 minutes for pints. So this will have to go for 75 minutes. I also need to point out that my the way I do my beans is not the approved way, and it is not uh, any cured meat, bacon, sausage, ham, any of that, corned beef, that is not approved for canning. And again, go to the website, 
or go to your ball canning book and do it the safe way. Remember, don't don't do what I do. <laughs> you know, like cut your finger off. So, but make sure you do your own research on anything that you do. So, since I have a variety and meat takes the longest, I will be canning, setting the timer. Once I get this to the point, the jiggling to the point where I want it to be, I'll be setting the timer for 75 minutes. And you don't leave your canner. It looks like it's doing it about right. So, I'll try to leave it at this, and um, I'll let it go for 75 minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, the 75 minute timer went off. So, I have turned off the fire under the canner. Leave the weight on. Do not touch it. What you want to do is, you can watch this, but this isn't always. It has to come back down to zero zero pounds of pressure and when you tap this you don't want to hear it psh, releasing any uh, steam or pressure so you leave it set untouched don't wrap cold towels around it don't do any or immerse it in cold water do nothing to bring the temperature down quickly that's all part of the uh, canning process is letting it come back down to pressure so, you know, that could take a while. And, you know, every canner is different. And I really don't remember um, how long the last one took when I canned last time. So, I'll come back and I'll show you what we do after. Okay, guys, the pressure went back down to zero. And we're going to take the lid off just like we put it on. We got to undo it opposite sides. Sometimes I just don't know my own strength. Now, even though the pressure is back down to zero and it's not releasing steam, there's still going to be steam inside of here. So, when you remove the lid, make sure you point it away from you. These are my, what are these called? Grill gloves. And you'll all be glad to know I got Kevlar gloves and actually lose, used the mandolin slicer today and didn't cut my hand. All right. I showed you before there's little pegs on the side. You have to twist this just a bit to release those. And then, see all that steam rise off? People have been burned. because they open it towards their face instead of away. So, then you take your jars out. That's why jar lifters are important. Oh, that's the ham. See, it made all of its own juice. I don't know if you can see that in there. That's pretty cool. Son of a gun, I tipped it over. That's not cool. Here's some of the plain broth that I made. Now on these Tatler lids, I used to take them out immediately and tighten them down. And I just recently read that you should let them vent for a couple of minutes. So that's what I'll do. I'll take the top row out. And while I'm getting them all out, they'll vent, finish venting. I don't know. And these are the beans that I canned in ham juice. They ought to be good. Alright, if you don't have these grill gloves, grill mate, whatever they're called, use a towel. But then you with a tattler lid, you tighten down your ring after you take it out. So I'm going to go around. You want to leave it on a, a towel or something similar. Never put the hot jars directly on the cold countertop. That will cause it to crack. 
Oh. I hope I didn't mess that one up. There's the top row. <clears throat> Can you see it's still bubbling? It's boiling inside yet. So, you're going to let these set overnight, at least overnight, and let them cool. Never with a breeze on them, no fan. And then tomorrow, I take the rings off. And to test if you have a seal, you pick up on the lid. And if the lid doesn't come off, you have a good seal. Now I'm going to take the bottom rack out and do the same thing with them, but I'm going to put those on the other side. So anyway, guys, this is my little uh, playing with my Cinnamon Girl canner and doing two layers. That was fun. I got twice as much done in one canning session. All right, guys, I'm going to get the, this uploaded and talk to you all later.